Hello YouTube and welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. I am your host Lucas and I'm bringing to you guys today part two of my build and review series on the Detroit Multirotors 3 inch stretch X. It's a 160 millimeter frame built out of a two and a half millimeter carbon fiber. If you haven't yet checked out the previous video, I go over all the parts that we're gonna be using on this build. And on this episode, we are going to assemble the frame and start doing some dry fitting of the components so we can figure out uh, exactly where things are gonna go, how we're gonna wire it up. So let's get going with the actual build of the frame here. All right guys, so let's take a look here at the parts that were supplied with the frame. So uh, we've got the bottom plate, which is comprised of two pieces. One is made out of that PCB material, uh, and the other one is made out of uh, carbon fiber. As you can see, I've already prepared the carbon fiber and done my signature white edging that I love to do. Uh, if you're curious about how I do it, it's basically, I just use uh, the DupliColor, um, <clears throat> these guys over here, let me just pull one out. This is what I use to do the pinstriping. Uh, it works really well because the applicator is just about the right width to paint directly on. And it comes with a clear coat that is automotive grade quality. And I've found so far that it lasts quite a long time. And uh, it doesn't take a lot of long to do. However, it does smell pretty bad. So make sure you do it somewhere well ventilated or wear a mask. So back to the frame. Um, I came with the four uh, four arms, individual arms, that uh, you, that way if you break one you can very easily swap them out. Uh, the WP17 in 5 inch configuration also comes with removable arms if you remember the video series, but uh, these ones were set as a pair, so if you broke if you broke an arm, you were looking at replacing both. Uh, I heard from the Detroit Multirotor guys that they didn't quite like the design, so they're going back to having uh, single arms because it's a little bit easier on the maintenance side and it doesn't seem to add that much weight. It also came with the with the little um, antenna mount for the back. Uh, the top plate is exactly the same as the five inch one. I even put them against each other. They're exactly the same one to one. So let's get started with building, putting together the frame. And uh, as far as I understand, it should be a pretty quick process. So yeah, so we're just lining up the holes right like that. Pretty simple stuff. And uh, we'll throw some screws through it. So it looks like they only have two, two sizes of screw here. Uh, the longer ones seem to be for you to use in the corners on the front right here, here, so that they can actually connect to the posts. So that's what I'm learning right now. So there's four screws that are uh, a few millimeters longer. Let's take a quick look here. Um, so they have two sizes of screw that come in the kit. The first size of screw is a 13 millimeter and the second size of screw is a 11 millimeter. And on the front here, these ones here that are gonna be attached to the actual posts and not to the nuts, you're gonna to wanna to put the longer screw, just like this. Oh, losing our arm there. Okay, so. Basically like that. If you get... Okay, so I'm just gonna do the same to the other one over here and catch that little front guy. Okay, so now I can use the other smaller ones. Oh, wait a minute. Aha. Uh, before I go further, I should actually attach uh, the stands onto the onto the bottom plate here. So as you guys can see, it doesn't come with a manual, and I'm figuring this thing out as I go. So I might make some mistakes, and uh, shouldn't take too long to correct though. Okay. Perfect. Just like that. We've got our nylon stands sitting pretty over there with steel screws in the bottom. So let's continue on to adding uh, the bottom plate and uh, a couple of sets of arms here. So I'm gonna start with this front left arm and I have it sandwiched between the bottom plate and the middle plate or the top plate, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna use one of the long screws to go through the whole stack just like that, and then I'm gonna use the pole, or sorry, the 
one of the standoffs to hold that together. Okay, so now we just need to line up a couple of the other ones and we'll screw those down in a second. Let's put down another arm here and do the same thing. Cool. Very nice. Okay, now just to finish off the structure, we're going to add the, the supporting screws, which are the shorter kind, and they have an M3 uh, nut that accompanies them. It's not tight yet because I need to go grab my M3 driver in a second, but let's just keep getting them set up. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to revise my previous statement. Perhaps these uh, middle ones here are not necessary and they actually would have been used to close this off. So through the magics of editing, we're back and I removed the inner screws because they don't seem to be necessary. This still feels quite sturdy. I can't even twist the frame really and I'm, and I'm trying pretty hard. So we. So these two TPU bits over here are basically the camera mounts. I'm not bothering straightening them all out and everything like that because I still have to clean them up. We just want to put them together to see what it looks like and uh, get a weigh in on the wife's uh, scale. <laughs> There's also a shield for the camera that goes on the top over here. It's a pretty neat little pit, little piece. We're just gonna put it on top here. Uh, this piece is gonna need uh, some cleaning over there, so I'm not gonna bother attaching it. I'm just gonna put it on top for our weigh-in. But uh, let's put the last two screws here just to hold it in place and take a look at what we've got. So. This is roughly what it's gonna look like when it is finished. And it's a pretty neat little frame, and you can definitely see the resemblance with the five-inch, uh, five-inch version of the WP17. So it's a very, very similar geometry, and uh, the only difference is that this guy is made for three-inch, and uh, the arms are separate instead of being joined as the other one. So uh, I'm very curious to see how this is going to fly. So I've gone ahead and cleaned off the the TPU parts so that they will slide a little bit easier on the on the parts over here, but we're not gonna worry about them right just the second because we're gonna start off first with the with actually putting down the flight controller. So according to this, the flight controller should be facing this way. And hmm. Damn it's a tight fit. I hope I can get this out. Yeah I can, okay. All right, so that was a very, very, very tight fit. I might go in with a, with a diamond file and uh, file around these holes a little bit on the Pico so they can slide a little bit easier because uh, it's not quite perfect and uh, it was very difficult to put it on. So that's why I like to do dry fitting too because I find this stuff out and then I can correct for it later. So uh, the Innova VTX goes on sort of like this. I'm gonna need a couple of nylon stands for that. Uh, I'll show you here. So there's only two holes for the actual for the actual uh, standoffs, and they kind of just free floats there. Seems like an interesting choice, but uh, it also has some pin headers over here at the top that are gonna be soldered in. So I think that's gonna be enough to hold things in place. Let's see, is this enough clearance? I feel like it is enough clearance. Okay. So the VTX will go on. So another problem, uh, the stands are actually interfering with the with the VTX shielding right there. So probably gonna have to do is put a small little nut and then trim it off so that it is
boom, just like that, I cut it flush using one of these snippers right here uh, from back from my scale modeling days, and bingo. Perfect. So uh, all we need now is uh, two more little nuts to secure the VTX in place. That's basically it in terms of the stack, really. So we have the Pico BLX and stacked on top of it, we have the Innova. So, uh, yep. So technically this is the front of the craft for now. Not really too worried about that. So let's just slide the camera holder here for a second. Okay, took a bit of wrangling, but I was able to get the TPU uh, camera mount sort of set up. I'm just gonna remove. So that's a bit high. I need to push this further down. So that's about what we're looking at here for the camera placement. It is very, very, very close to um, to the stack. I have to try and move it as far forward as I can. And uh, getting that wiring in there is gonna probably be a little bit of a pain I needed to do. I might have to increase the size of the hole over there to fit the camera a little bit better. But that's basically the idea. That's where the camera is gonna sit. There's not gonna be a lot of room over there, so I'm gonna have to think very carefully when I go to attach this wire and get it attached to the camera itself. So yeah, that's about what I'm thinking for the for the UFL. Um, just curving over and up, and then going back into into the top plate right there. Should keep it away from the props and everything else. So we also have our receiver here, and I'm thinking about just tucking the receiver underneath here, and kind of letting this thing fly around over here, or maybe putting it further up like uh, attaching it to basically the top plate right about here and then uh, having just a little tail to like stick it up like that which I actually think that's probably what I'm gonna do so uh, that's exactly where I'm gonna mount it because I don't have to worry about anything being there it's just a very simple um, little bit of tape right there we'll hold it in place and my radio should work just fine so let's see what this sort of looks like once we get all the parts together I think I'm going to bother with the rear plate. I didn't use the rear plate on my last build. So uh, I'm going to leave it off because the Innova VTX takes care of it and it's just added weight. So I'm not going to use it. Okay, so here we get to get a pretty good idea of, uh, of how this build is going to look. It's going to be pretty compact, there's not going to be much to it at all, just the two little boards over there. We have our stubby little antenna for the back. Oops. 
careful not to twist this wire too much. <laughs> Look at that thing. The antenna is almost bigger than the whole thing. That is going to be hilarious to fly around. Okay, so uh, motors are going to go on like that, that much is obvious. But uh, what I'm starting to wonder here is how the hell am I going to fit these ESCs? Because the ESCs are pretty damn massive, man. I mean, look at that. They are about as big as the arms. So, I don't know. Toying with the idea of having them like, sort of like that. That looks messy too, I don't like that at all. Having them underneath maybe. Uh, put a couple screws in one of these uh, in one of these motors and just see and just feel it out see what it looks like Put two screws and they're very light, very lightly placed on there just to hold the motor in place. So look at that. Pretty cute little motor, eh? So now challenge becomes what to do with the ESCs. either like attach them in sort of a funky configuration like that and you can still get a strap around them or if I decide to go with the, them mounted underneath the only question becomes how do I get the wires all the way up there without bunching up a bunch of stuff Yeah guys, the more I look at this, the more likely it seems that I'm just gonna have to rock an under under the arm mount. Wiring might get a little bit tricky, but I'm gonna try to be nice and tidy with it.
Yeah. So unless I change my mind when it actually comes time to uh, soldering, I think I'm going to end up with it mounted on the bottom like that. The wires are going to be a little bit longer, but I don't see another way. Trying to mount it this way on the arm is just pretty much impossible. I mean, maybe I can get it in there, but the fact that these wires are already kind of soldered together is a bit of a piss off. I mean, maybe I can make it happen. Operative word being maybe. Yeah, I forgot it right there. Well, we'll see. That might be an alternative as well. Not as bad a one. I think I can get enough of a of a zip tie around there. Though it's pretty exposed to any prop strikes. So I think I'm gonna stick to my original plan of uh, bottom mounting it that way and then running the wires around on the opposite side as to where the blades come in. So that should protect the wires from being cut and uh, it will look kind of neat from the top. Uh, I run battery in the bottom anyway, so it's unlikely that this uh, the ESC will get damaged during landings or anything like that. I'm pretty confident about that. All right, so um, all I'm gonna do here right now is remove uh, some of the, all the components and leave just the frame because I forgot to weigh it. All right, guys, I almost forgot to weigh this, as I always seem to forget to weigh these things. Anyway, <clears throat> so the frame by itself and uh, all the little TPU parts I came with only weighs 66 grams. So it is a very, very, very light frame. Um, I'm gonna be running mine without this TPU bit and that drops about two grams, so, or sorry, three grams. So uh, we're looking at 63 grams for just the frame and the TPU parts that I'm gonna be using. Uh, well guys, that pretty much concludes the dry fitting of the WP17 3 inch. Thank you for sticking around for the show. Uh, I hope you guys learned something here and I hope you appreciate the going into detail as to how I do the fitting of these frames that I haven't built before and uh, there's really no manual as to how to do this. Uh, I have never used uh, these components like the, the Innova VTX, so that's gonna be an interesting one for me. Uh, I hope you stick around and subscribe so that you can get the next part of the video series which I'm hoping to release next week which will be the full build of the 3 inch as well as the Maiden. I usually sneak in the Maiden at the end of those videos. And then the following week I'm hoping to release a full series of flight videos with this thing and uh, give you guys some impressions as to how it handles. Uh, very curious to see how these Brother Hobby motors are going to handle. So anyway, thanks for sticking around and I'll see you guys next time.